episode 556. I learned nothing in lecture, says a teen genius. Learn how her learning was unleashed by great teachers and what these teachers did. This is episode 556. The 10 Minute Teacher Podcast with Vicki Davis. Every weekday, you'll learn powerful, practical ways to be a more remarkable teacher today. So today we're talking with Gitanjali Rao. She is 13 years old and an eighth grader at a STEM school in Colorado. Gitanjali, you have done some incredible things. What did you invent? Hi, so I invented a device that helps detect lead in drinking water faster and cheaper than the current techniques out there today. So how did you decide to tackle this particular topic? I think I've always looked at things in a scientific approach. And one of the biggest problems that I was seeing on the news pretty much on a daily basis was um, the Flint water crisis. And it was huge and so many people were affected by it. But the number one thing that really... I guess bothered me was the fact that there were so many kids my age drinking like a poison every day. So I decided to come up with something that could help solve that problem. Did you have a teacher guiding you or did you just start experimenting or how did that work? 100%. I think um, to still to this day, I'd be working on the device if I did not have a whole bunch of teachers and mentors who were guiding me. But yes, I had to learn a majority of the things myself, apart from the things we usually learn in school. But um, I guess with just my teachers being there to guide me and support me every step of the way, it made it really easy to learn more concepts like nanotubes and things with my chemistry teacher. You decided to open source your lead detector invention processor and app code. Why did you decide to do that? That's a pretty progressive thing to do. I mean, besides the fact that you invented it and you invented this when you were 13 or when you were 12? Um, when I was 11, actually. Okay. So when you were 11, so this is like, you know, you've, you're grown now, right? <laughs> yeah. I am. Yeah. I'm a high schooler now. So yeah, crazy. So how did you decide to open source this? Um, So I decided that, you know, it would make it easier if everybody had the option to test for lead in the water, not just places like Flint. So I open sourced my app code. So hopefully people can start developing it for other sensor based tests as well. Okay. So can you guide me? You had teachers guiding you. Can you describe a, a little bit about what you invented, how it works and just, you know, who guided you and how that whole process worked? Yeah, so the invention is a device to detect lead in water. And pretty much how it works is it includes a device and then there's a cartridge, which you dip it into the water that you want to test. It forms resistance to the flow of current within these nanotubes. And all the results are sent onto your onto your phone on an app that I created. So obviously I could have done all of this um, myself. So I had my chemistry teacher who really, really helped me with learning more in-depth concepts and uh, was open to me coming into the labs like I don't know on weekends or on days where school wasn't running and to do my tests outside of school hours which is crazy and it was so helpful um I had my computer science teacher who was constantly helping me improve my app code ensure the user experience of my app helping me come up with the best possible app I've ever seen and then I had my engineering teacher who helped me with 3d printing my device and helping me you know understand how 3d printing even works that was the first First time I 3D printed anything in my life. Wow. Now, do you want to give a shout out to these teachers and say their names? Yeah, for sure. So my chemistry teacher, Miss Richardson. Hi, Miss um, Basu. I'm still I have had her class for two years straight and I do a whole bunch of different talks and speaking events with her, too. So hi. And Miss um, Phillips, who's my engineering teacher and is actually my structural analysis class teacher right now, too. So I'm learning how to build bridges, which is pretty interesting. Cool. So as you talk to teachers all over the planet who are listening to you, what is your advice to teachers to help more students have their creativity unleashed like you have? I think definitely one thing that helped me and I think will help a whole bunch of other students is just having that personal one on one time with students. And um, rather than just teaching the class as a whole, while that's extremely important, also being able to, um, I guess, talk to students about what their passions are and help them guide that. Because I guess what a teacher's main goal is, is to do what's best for their students. And I think think that what's best for especially our generation is just exploring our passions even more. Now, you've written books, you've done lots of really 
cool things. Do your parents encourage you in this direction? 100%. Actually, uh, I like a lot of people are always like, do your parents force you to do this? And I really like that question actually is do your parents encourage you? And, um, it, yes, 100%. This just my idea of coming up with inventions and stuff is something that's so deeply important to me and something that I will definitely continue to do. And um, my parents have always been there to support me through this journey. So you've given Ted talks, you've done all kinds of different cool things, but what is your encouragement to teachers to unleash their students. You've already said, you know, spend that one-on-one -on -one time, help find what interests them. But obviously these topics are exciting to you. So how do we make our topics exciting to the kids in our classroom? Um, 100% hands-on activities, I would say. Um, that's the best way I learned. And I think that's the best way every student will learn. I mean, people are different thinkers, but I had I had a whole bunch of science teachers, one who just wrote notes on the board and we took notes. I learned absolutely nothing in that class. Um, one who just talked and we had to write notes. Notes. Didn't learn anything in that. But then there was also one teacher who helped us make our own experiments and really, I guess, just play, play with items and play with materials and kind of design our own things. And that's the class where I learned the most. Wow. So you're telling me that when they lectured and you just took tests, that that didn't really teach you anything, but it was when you got your hands dirty. That's when you started learning. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, that is awesome. Now, as we finish up, what we'll probably have some teachers share this with their students. Um, what is your word to students who are like, I want to invent, I want to create, what should they do? I think for students, it's to just go for it. And there's no such thing as a bad idea. And it's you always I, I know I started with the idea of I want to invent and I want to create, but um, I ended up giving up within the first couple of weeks and had these amazing ideas. But now I forgot because I thought I was going to fail and I knew it wasn't going to work. And eventually I'm coming up with all these ideas, which have so much which sound close to impossible, but actually in reality have so much potential. So I would say just if you have an idea, stick with it and go with it, because that can really make a difference. Okay, Gitanjali, we will be hearing from you, I know, in the future as we watch all of the really cool things that you do with your life. And I really love what you've said about hands-on learning. You are totally speaking the language that, that I totally uh, get and agree with. And just thank you for telling the story. Thank you for having me. I hope a whole bunch of teachers, you know, really enjoy this. Today, Gatanjali challenged us in four ways. Number one, make relationships and spend one-on-one -on -one time with our students. Number two, help kids pursue their passions. Number three, go hands-on in your classroom. I really hope that you listen to what she said about a lecture and note-taking. Well, these things can be important. If you're not hands-on, you're missing out. Number four, help kids have fun and let them create and experiment. I also want to give a shout out to some educators who have shared some things that they have learned this week. Ron Bolden and Laura Snyder each played Bear Salmon Mosquito in their classrooms from our Five More Easy Brain Breaks episode at number 555 with Rob Donatelli. Educators who care share. And as Ron and Laura shared, other teachers started joining in the conversation. One teacher even reflected that he doesn't call them brain breaks, but he calls them brain boosters. And that's a great thing. Of course, Rob calls it Donatelli challenges. And that's awesome too. So if you take the challenge from this particular episode, which is your challenge is to apply one of these four ways. How can you make relationships? Could you spend one-on-one -on -one time with every single student in your class this week? Number two, are you doing something to help students pursue their passions? Number three, could you plan at least one hands-on activity this week? Or number four, could you help kids have fun as they are learning this week? So if you do one of those four things that Gitanjali has challenged us to do, share what you do and tag me at Cool Cat Teacher on the social media of your choice and let's level up together. And perhaps I will include you in a 10-minute teacher shout out in the future.